Discover a timeless movie from 1964 that still shines in the film world. It's a dark comedy by the famous director Stanley Kubrick, poking fun at the fear of the Cold War. As you watch, be ready for a mix of feelings. It's funny, shocking, and a bit sad, too. What makes this movie special? Maybe it's the clever jokes, the strong satire, or the unforgettable acting. Do you have a favorite memory linked to this film? Maybe a scene that made you laugh hard or think about how strange the world can be? Share your stories below. We'd love to hear them. Stay tuned for a journey through a movie that mixes humor and horror and find out why it still clicks with people today. There's more to explore and we're excited to do it together. Tell us about your favorite memory or experience with this film. Share your stories below. Get ready to dive into a classic film that's still relevant. And remember, the best stories are the ones we share. Dr. Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, which came out in 1964, is often seen as a big deal in Hollywood. It was directed by Stanley Kubrick and had great actors like Peter Sellers, George C. Scott, and Sterling Hayden. The movie makes fun of Cold War fears and how the military can mess up. Even though it's against the military, the movie is fun and makes you think. It uses symbols, irony, and making fun of things to show how silly people can be, especially when it comes to nuclear weapons. Some people might not like its political message, but others enjoy its dark humor and clever jokes. One cool thing is how Peter Sellers plays different roles, especially the U.S. president. He shows off his funny side. George C. Scott is also great as Buck Turgidson, adding more to the movies look at how crazy the military can be. The movie is in black and white and scenes like Slim Pickens riding a bomb make it memorable and cool to look at. In summary, Dr. Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb is a classic funny movie that still connects with people. It talks about how silly war and people can be and it's still popular today. It was the actor's performance as Inspector Jacques Clouseau in the Pink Panther movies was so good that he made it onto Premiere Magazine's list of 100 greatest movie characters of all time at number 67. He played the character with a funny mix of clumsiness and humor that people all over the world loved. After shooting a TV ad for Barclays Bank in Ireland, which never aired, he died four weeks later. Even though he died young, people still remember and love his movies. His third wife, Miranda Quarry, is now called the Countess of Stockton, and she's still involved in his work. He inspired lots of actors and filmmakers to follow their dreams. He made people laugh and feel happy with his characters and movies. He will always be remembered as a great actor and storyteller. And that's the story of his life. Dr. Strange Love, the 1964 film, explores some interesting things. One standout is the portrayal of a condition called agonistic apraxia, also known as alien hand syndrome. This happens when the corpus callosum is damaged, causing the person to have involuntary movements in one hand. Researchers at the University of Aberdeen identified this and called it Dr. Strange Love Syndrome. In the scene where Burpless and Air Force Base is attacked, a sign with the words peace is our profession appears. Surprisingly, this isn't made up by the filmmakers. It's actually the motto of the Strategic Air Command, adding a touch of reality to the movie's satire. Also, Columbia Pictures insisted that Peter Sellers play at least four big roles in the movie to get funding. This decision came from the success of Sellers playing many roles in the film Lolita, released in 1962. Sellers' skill as an actor was crucial in bringing Dr. Strange Love to life on screen. In summary, Dr. Strange Love shows a unique side of alien hand syndrome, includes real-world elements like the Strategic Air Command's motto, and highlights Peter Sellers' talent in playing different roles. These things make the film special and interesting. The movie follows the story of a group of characters dealing with a potential nuclear crisis. Lucy Arabella Fox, Viscountess Gormanston, is related to one of the film's actors. The sets for the movie were constructed on three sound stages, representing the Pentagon War Room, a B-52 bomber, and various indoor locations. The film's director had a keen interest in photography throughout his life. His passion for cameras influenced the visual style of the film. It's a classic piece of cinema known for its dark humor and satirical take on Cold War tensions. The movie remains relevant today for its commentary on the dangers of nuclear warfare and the absurdity of political decision-making in times of crisis. Dr. Strange Love, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, released in 1964, was a significant film directed by Stanley Kubrick. 
One interesting aspect of the movie's production was the chess matches between George C. Scott and Marlon Brando. Although Scott claimed Brando wasn't a strong player, he himself was often defeated by Kubrick, who was known for his chess skills. Scott's passion for racing also contributed to his eventual hearing loss. He frequently participated in loud races with various vehicles in Detroit and on the Detroit River. Additionally, he was the father of Victoria Sellers, whom he had with actress Britt Eklund. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes provide insight into the personalities and experiences involved in the making of the film. The 1964 movie Dr. Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb showcases interesting behind-the-scenes anecdotes. Stanley Kubrick, the director, often maintained a serious demeanor on set. However, during scenes with Peter Sellers, he couldn't contain his laughter. Sellers' performances amused Kubrick to the point of tears. During filming, Sellers arrived on set dressed as a cowboy and speaking with a southern accent. The British crew initially mistook this for method acting, unaware that it was Sellers' usual attire and behavior. These anecdotes provide insight into the dynamic on set, highlighting Sellers' ability to entertain and Kubrick's appreciation for his talent. The 1964 movie features a 22-foot diameter grand table in the war room. It was inducted into the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame in 2005. The German word Gemeinschaft refers to a social relationship characterized by strong bonds of sentiment and kinship within a common tradition. The film's portrayal of post-apocalypse society living in mine shafts adds depth to this concept. Dr. Strange loves remarks about the society's acceptance of new social norms and curiosity for the future are noteworthy. General Turgidson's pun about not allowing a mineshaft gap is particularly vivid in this context. In the making of the movie, Kubrick sought accuracy in depicting missile trajectories and learned that they were fictional. With assistance, he identified West Cork, Ireland as the safest place based on missile silo locations, prompting European property purchases in the area. Pickens, who served in the U.S. Army Air Force during World War II, became a radio operator despite a recruitment misunderstanding. Additionally, he was a member of the NRA. Kubrick's dedication to authenticity led him to delve deep into the technical aspects of missile systems, consulting experts, and meticulously studying the intricacies of nuclear warfare. This commitment to realism not only enhanced the film's credibility, but also reflected Kubrick's uncompromising approach to his craft. Through meticulous research and attention to detail, he brought a chilling authenticity to the screen, capturing the paranoia and absurdity of the Cold War era. Such dedication and vision are hallmarks of Kubrick's filmmaking genius, shaping cinematic history for generations to come. Dr. Strange Love, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb is associated with actor George C. Scott, the grandson of Frank Keenan. In 1992, he received the American National Medal of the Arts from the National Endowment of the Arts in Washington, D.C. Scott's career was marked by a Time magazine cover story in 1971, revealing a moment during a Broadway play where he had to return on stage with a hand in a rubber glove. This unusual occurrence followed an incident in his dressing room where he punched a mirror, resulting in a hand injury and uncontrollable bleeding. At that time, Scott struggled with heavy drinking, stemming from inner torment and self-loathing. Acting served as a means for him to confront and overcome these personal demons. By the time of his success with Patton in 1970, Scott had largely succeeded in overcoming his inner struggles as per the magazine profile. George C. Scott's journey, marked by personal challenges and triumphs, adds a layer of depth to the broader narrative of Dr. Strange Love, or how I learned to stop worrying and love the bomb. It sheds light on the actor's resilience and his ability to use acting as a cathartic process for self-discovery and healing. 